from Nashville, Tennessee, it's time for another episode of Tips, Tactics, and Tools for a Safer Tomorrow, where all things related to your safety and security are discussed, detailed, and delivered to you. You may leave with a tip that saves you money or a tactic that saves your life. So here are your hosts, owner and founder of Defend Systems, Brent Fiddler, and owner and operator of Herring Technology, Tom Herring. Hey everybody, welcome to this edition of Tips, Tactics, and Tools for a Safer Tomorrow. My name is Brink Fiddler, owner and founder of Defend Systems. With me as always, my co-host and founder of this podcast, Tom the Man Herring, owner and operator of Herring Technology, the best security technology firm on the planet, in my opinion. Uh, I might be a little biased, but... But I like it. Yeah, good. Yeah. It's a good well, bias. It is a good bias. Um, you know, there's... <laughs> In the world of safety and security, there's never really a shortage of stuff to discuss or look at or investigate or explore. But especially in the times we are living in right now, um, with all the civil unrest, um, the defund the police movement, uh, just the anarchists, the, the statues being toppled, uh, crime going through the roof, police officers being as far from motivated as you can be, and it, so it brings up a lot of, um, you know, interesting points and, and explorations that uh, a lot of homeowners are, are starting to look at, uh, and they should, you know, um, from a how do I protect myself standpoint. And what we're seeing, there's an uptick in crime, um, whether it's being reported or not, um, there is an absolute uptick in crime, especially... Uh, in the more affluent areas. And I know, Tom, you've got some uh, firsthand knowledge on some recent crime here in Nashville, right? Absolutely. Received a call yesterday. Um, very affluent neighborhood. And, you know, it was typical car break-in type scenario where they, you know, they come by and check the handles. And if it's unlocked, they get in, peel for through. I guess the alarming thing to this is, as we started looking at it, that's not a single house they're hitting. You know, it's, it's, we call it running the neighborhood. So somebody's dropping them off, you know, three to four kids and, uh, and, and they are kids, um, but they're running, you know, just through the neighborhood, really not fast as they can. I mean, since that's happened, we've collected video footage from several different neighbors and, you know, from ring doorbell footage to, to regular uh, security system footage. These guys are brazen. I mean, they're walking. They're walking, they're talking, and they are blazing guns in the middle of the street, up in the yards, in your little parking area out behind your house. Wow. And, you know, people are laying there asleep and have no idea it's going on. Now, a part of that is people lock your doors. Take your gun out of your car and take it inside. Yeah, I mean that's how they're getting the guns. <laughs> is people you know no, doing that auto burglaries, right? Correct, but they they do have them. And the biggest shift that we're you know that we've seen, and I'm calling what they are. They're punks. They're thugs. They're sure punks, they and they're brazen. They they would just as soon shoot if you encounter them, and. You know, these people need, you, you, you people out there need to understand that. If you're going to confront them, you better be ready because they would just as soon shoot and run as anything. So we're establishing that the reality of what Antifa talked about a couple of weeks ago, uh, a lot of people are aware that they put out a call to action to start getting out into the neighborhoods. All right. This is no longer happening in your cities. This is, we're coming out to the neighborhoods. Um and it's funny because you see the re response to uh, some of the good old boys in the in the in the country going, "Oh yeah, let's <laughs> let's bring it on, man! Come on!" But yeah. there are a lot of people in and around the Nashville area, myself included, okay, who is kind of like, "Well, oh crap, this is getting real now." I've been putting it off, putting it off, putting it off, you know, to get training, to get armed up, and things of that nature. Um, what do I need to do? You know, I mean, uh, do I get trained first, then buy something? What do I buy? Uh, you had mentioned something very scary earlier in conversation off the air about uh, uh, somebody hearing somebody rifling around in their garage. And you're in a sleep stupor. The people in your garage are not. They've got adrenaline on their side. 
They are thinking clearly. They know exactly what their objective is. And like you're talking about, they're brazen. They're not going to think twice about pulling a trigger. No. Okay, so what do I do? Oh, the, good Lord, that's a that's a eight-part yeah. series of episodes, <laughs> right? But um, a lot of things. So number one, let's sit on the garage versus house thing. If Just, you know, we're, we don't give legal advice here, but if they breach your structure, and, and that includes your garage, um, then that's a game changer. However, we see that a lot with auto burglars because if they're breaking into your car in the driveway, then inevitably your your garage door remote is in there and they'll hit that to go rifle through your garage. Typically, the, the, the people that do that are there to just steal your stuff, mm -hmm. armed or not. If they enter your actual home, and from a legal standpoint, it's not any difference, right? I mean, if they, if they breach your structure, they're in your structure. But if they enter your home, then they are there to do far more than steal your stuff because they know somebody's home, all right? There's a big difference between most regular burglars um, hit houses between eight and five, right? Because they know everybody's at work, nobody's at home. Minus the pandemic, of course. If somebody enters your home in the middle of the night, they know you're in there, right? I mean, that's that's a whole different animal. That's a different person. That's a different deal. So how do we, number one, prevent that? Uh, or number two, deal with it if it does happen? Well, you know, I, I teach an acronym for de DEFEND when we do our active shooter training. And the D in DEFEND is DETER, right? We want to stop it. And that same thing goes here. So a lot of things I would do from a technology standpoint, Tom, it, it, we talked about the, the ring doorbell in some past episodes. Great doorbell, great camera. I mean, it's easy to install. It's not. Hold on. Ring, Nest, Skybell, all of them are. And I don't sure. go with just one brand and think that we're endorsing that brand because yeah. they're all good. Um, I have Skybell in mine. Yeah. Okay. Go, yeah. go buy them and use them, people. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm so getting at. Doorbell <laughs> camera that's worth a crap. Yeah. Um, but truth be told, I, I mean, yes, that's going to capture footage, but we haven't necessarily seen it prevent, right? Not yet. I mean, I, um, but what what is a criminal's, what's the number one thing they want to avoid that's being caught, right? Correct. So um, you brought up motion lights earlier in conversation. Uh, you know, if, again, they love to operate in the darkness um, because they don't think anybody can. Cockroaches. <laughs> damn right. And they don't think anybody can see them. So motion lights great um are just leaving your lights on if you don't want motion lights you mean electricity bill will be higher but whatever but light up the area do not park your vehicles outside if you can if you can keep from it if you've got a garage use it if you have to park them outside take your garage door remote in with you don't leave your wallet don't leave firearms don't leave things like that in your vehicle uh and make it a an easy target for them and if you have a new truck or car don't leave your key fob in there because when you get close, you can push the little button and get mm -hmm. in when it's you. Mm -hmm. They're going to get your truck or right. your car. And, and then what are they going to do with it? Go commit, go commit other crimes exactly. with a stolen vehicle. So, you know, they, they crave anonymity. Um, and something as simple as lighting can help that. From a um, stop them from breaching your door at your home standpoint. Well, walk, walk me through the, the acronym of DEFEND FIRST. What is that? Uh, deter. Mm -hmm. Evade. Fortify, evaluate, notify, and defend. But again, that's an active shooter uh, training curriculum. This is not your home curriculum. Right. But I just brought it up because uh, the 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 D plays into the role no matter what. I mean, sure. Tom, Tom's in the business of deterring. I mean, hello. I mean, that's what he does. So anyway, from a from a stop them from breaching your door at your home standpoint. I'm a huge fan of Haven Lock. Um, they're local, are based here. They're nationwide, or I guess a worldwide company, but they're based in the Middle Tennessee area. They have a locking device that, that mounts um, on the floor behind your door uh, or on your door if it's a classroom setting. But, um, you know, when they first approached me about, you know, getting behind their product, I told them I wanted to test it first. And so, and I mean on an actual house, not a warehouse built door. And we put it on an actual house that was going to get demoed the next day. And I brought... One of my SWAT friends that's um, arguably one of the strongest and most athletic guys on the SWAT team with a RAM, and we tested it. And let me tell you, you're not getting – I don't want to go into a bunch of detail, but you're not going to be able to kick that door in if it's got a haven lock on it. You just 
can't. Right. People say, well, and I talked to them the other day, and their their residential sales are through the roof and have been since kind of all this started because people are stuck at home. They want more security. So fantastic. What if you have a glass door? What's the solution there? You're going to put a coating over that glass or a film on it or right. whatever just to delay the, the entry. Security film. I, I'm a huge fan of it as well. I, I've not tested all the brands, but I have tested 3M brand security film uh, with uh, the solar installation window film guys. And without a lot of time, effort, energy, and tools, you're not going to get through that film either. So it'll, the glass will break and you can shoot through it, but you're not going to it's a pain in the butt to get through it. And I've actually got video uh, and I'll see if we can get permission to post it on the, on the website of an attempted gun store burglary down in Florida that had that film on there. And these guys tried to break out the front glass and go in and steal a bunch of guns. And finally they, and they couldn't figure out why they couldn't get through the glass. Finally, they just got mad as hell and just shot a couple of rounds into the store and left because <laughs> it had a security film on there. But it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good, it's a great product. Um, you know, you want to stop them from getting in your home first. Um, but at the same time, do you, it's almost, they kind of go hand in hand, right? In my mind, Tommy, that, yeah, we let's, let's fortify our home, but let's also be ready for the fight, you know, which includes getting armed, right? Yeah. Well, that goes to my acronym. <laughs> <laughs> the three D's, delay, deny, destroy. That's yeah, sound uh, like a soccer coach. Yeah, that's my. That was, you know, the way we learned def defense and soccer. But that was also, uh, I, I look at it for a home. Yeah, uh, you want to delay anything that's going to go. Then you want to deny them if you can, and then if you can't, utter destruction. Destroy. There you go. And uh, you know, it's a hard way to look at it, but it's it's true. Um, some of the footage that we received <clears throat> since this break in the other night. As, as shown, you know, uh, as far as technology goes, we're talking about Ring, Nest, and all those. Um, you know, they now have the floodlights, motion lights. So if the camera just detects a movement or anything, the light will come on. And and I, I called them cockroaches earlier, which uh, that's the way they are. They scatter. They don't like light. You know, that's... Uh, Ain't that the truth. That's <laughs> exactly. If they knew the light, that wouldn't be there to start with. But anyway, you know, in the video footage they come up the camera comes on you see them the light comes on and then and it's hilarious because as soon as the light comes on they start looking around but as i said they're brazen they don't run they just walk off slowly and go to the next house literally you know to check their doors to it's like check the trick-or-treating correct it right. is it's trick-or-treating in, in june here but the problem is and, and i want to tell everybody this you know, the difference in you going and buying those cameras and installing them and us coming to do it. You're, I'm just giving you a free tip here. Go buy them there. That's great. Um, they work, um, you know, at Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever you can get them online. But placement is the biggest issue. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not the actual equipment. It's the placement of that equipment. And, uh, in this case, most people put it up real high. I think, you know, the, the higher I go with a camera or my light, the more it floods I can light up, use less. Bring it down lower. Because in this case, yeah, we see the individuals. We see they're carrying guns. We, we see that. The light runs them off. It, it does, does well. But all we have is the tops of their heads. Yeah. Bring those down. That's why the ring doorbell at your door is so good is because it's low and it always gets that identification in the face unless your communist mayor makes you wear a mask <laughs> right now. That's Again, sad. we're back to your communist mayor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so we've, uh, we've, we've <laughs> find ways to deter and I guess fortify our home domicile, our, our castle, right? Yep. So those are the first steps you would do. Look into I'd it. almost do it. I mean, again, I'm not. Um, just because you fortify your home doesn't mean you're not going to get a pistol shoved in your face when you go to get in your vehicle in the morning to go to work right. and get carjacked. So, I, to me, it's not a, you know, what to do first. I, I would do it all. I mean, I, I mean, we'll get into the firearm stuff here in a second, but, um, 
you know, you want to, to, yeah, fortify your home, right? Make it, make it a difficult target. I mean, like, you know, like make them, I mean, it's as bad as it sounds, make them choose the neighbor's house over yours. I mean, I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, one of the things we we keep talking about light and, and that to me, it's a, it's a huge defense. Um, And I, these are the things I had actually talked with the homeowner on when I went over, went through the house, went through the yard, everything, you know, of things that you can, can take a look at landscape lighting Mm -hmm. and people take that so for granted, you know, it's, it's expensive. It's low voltage. Well, number one, it it's, makes your house very aesthetically pleasing at night. Yep. When you drive by it, it looks nice. It's not stating. You know, you don't have big floodlights on the side, so it looks like a prison yard. <laughs> but what people do not understand is what that light does. If it's between your fl- your bushes, your, your landscaping, and the house wall, you can't tuck down behind there and not cast a shadow up on the wall. So anybody driving by, it looks like a, you know, the shadow puppet show going on <laughs> yeah, on the side of your house. There's, you know, it has a reason for that. It, it is, it is nice looking. Um, and that's one of the things, you know, they don't like the light. Don't let them hide. Trim those shrubs, bring them down. You know, that's, that's huge. You, you don't want to create a hiding spot. It's just, as you mentioned, coming out in the morning, you know, People aren't awake in the mornings. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they're, uh, even if they are awake, they have 10,000 things on their mind. Yep. You know, I'm running out the back door. I have my cell phone in one hand because I have business calls I have to make. I have the trash in the other hand because the garbage truck's going to run in the next four minutes and I'm not going to make it. So my mind is on that. Well, guess what? Both my hands are occupied. My mind is elsewhere. And I have landscaping that provides the ultimate cover for anybody that has sat there and waited on me to come out. Yep. Okay. If you're the male leaving for the morning, we'll get, go that way to go to work and your kids and your wife are inside and you walk out like that and they have a hiding place. Guess what else you have? You have a key to get back in the house. So you just, you know, yep. and, and everybody understands that, you know, to Jim's point, he's normal homeowner that, yeah. Is living. The, you're going through life. You're. It's not on your mind. I'm Absolutely on guard exposed. every second. Yep. Yeah. You know. Or you're running out the door explaining to your boss why you're, why you're you're not late that you're stuck in traffic, but really you hadn't even gotten in your car, but you're on the phone not paying attention right then. Right. That's. Uh, well, how many people? I do this just out of habit. But how many people when they pull out of their garage and hit the close button actually watch the door get closed all the way? Correct. If I'm if I'm uh, leaving the house alone, I do. But if there's somebody in the house, I just typically drive off. Yeah. This morning, I got I left the house. I leave the front door unlocked when I leave. Okay. Stop doing that. I should. I know. By the way. But I mean, you know, what's a good? And Jim's address is. I'm <laughs> <laughs> is there a uh, deadbolt lock that you would recommend? I mean, other than the con- conventional key, uh, do you believe in the biometrics or the code? Type of locks. Uh, that, yeah. For convenience, there the code's fine. I, I'm not a fan of anything that takes batteries. Personally, I like a mechanical, like a simplex lock or something like that. That, you, but um, you know, if you just want it for convenience, you know, um, that's fine. But the thing about Haven, and it's a little more expensive, but they've got a hub right where you can, can connect and you know open it with your phone. You can send somebody a temporary key. Like if you got somebody dropping something off at your house, you can send it to their phone. It's a one-time use. They walk up to your door, the Haven drops, you open it. They've got video, and I know you saw it, of a guy holding a gun, his doorbell camera footage, holding a gun, trying to get in a homeowner's home here recently. And the homeowner is a huge fan and um, consumer of Haven products. The, the homeowner didn't even lock his deadbolt or his door handle. He just locks his Haven and... You know, and you see the guy trying to get in the door and can't figure out why he can't get in the door, and he rolls on. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I, the, the deadbolt stuff. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a deadbolt going into framing. You know, uh, make sure that the latch plate on your frame side has long screws in it, not the little itty bitty screws. Uh, but even that, dude. I mean, I kicked indoors for a living. I mean, it's it doesn't it's, take much. 
Man. No, it doesn't. You know? It doesn't take much talent either. If I can do it, I mean, I. It's, yeah. Oh, I want to back up a second. You yep. you mentioned how many watch the garage door close as they leave. Oh, I do, but but how many? This is the scary side. How many when they pull in, watch it close behind them, I and that, who comes in with them? I had that conversation. <laughs> I, don't, I won't say with who, but um, with two ladies. Um, one was going through. A, had a bunch of um robberies happening in the neighborhood and i'm like well, what you need to do when you pull in your garage put your car in reverse hit your close button and watch watch your mirrors and then once you're secure then you put it in park and roll out so if somebody comes in while you're doing that smash the gas and she said oh, we'll drive through my garage door i said yes you'll <laughs> drive through your garage door because that dude's not there to bring you flowers hello yeah. the other client <laughs> said well yeah i could do all that but why don't i just get out and stick my pistol in their face i'm like yeah you could do that but we want to try and avoid you know if we can i mean that's first um so i teach them to do that um well i you know i don't know i don't know how many people do that but if you rolled out of your house and i'm hiding in your landscape and and you go to back out i don't have to get in your garage before it closes i just got to get something in front of that sensor to make it go right back up mm -hmm. right yeah. so I, it's not like i have to duck and roll and ninja dive under there um but people need to be i mean just this is all easy stuff i mean like yeah. it's not hard but to people do. don't think about this stuff well yeah, they are like now said, they are now thank god but i mean okay let's let's move it up into someone's in your house it's middle of the night two thirty in the morning you hear something downstairs right in my case i'm putting i'm painting the picture for my bedroom First thing that, ah, oh, crap. I got to deal with this. What do I do? What's the first thing I do? Well, when you, obviously you've probably heard something in your house at yeah. night before. So as just, you know, the common citizen that's there, what's your first thought when you do hear something in your house? Oh, crap. I got to go deal with this. The hell am I going to do? Do That's, you, or yeah. do you think, man, what fell over? Or do you think somebody's in my house? Well, I mean, if you, I think you can discern by the noise that, you know, once you get to the point that you realize somebody's in your house, it's terrifying. Okay. Well, real quick, what you, one thing you should do, if you have an intrusion system on your house, which you should, a, a burglar alarm, uh, now be real. Turn it on. Right, on instant arm, right, not a delay. So when you go to bed, if somebody breaches a door, it goes off instantly, right? The, every alarm system has that feature. Most people don't use it. It's very helpful that, to know that a door or window has been breached in the middle of the night, and it's not the cat knock something yeah. over down there, right? Let me describe this, too, because yesterday I was going over this with the homeowner, and she was a little confused on what I meant by it. Yeah. Uh, when you get an alarm system, depending on who you get it from, it's going to have entry doors, you know, some doors and some windows will automatically go straight to the alarm going off, not the beeping at the keypad. Yeah, not the delay. Right? Correct. That's a yeah. delay. That's not your alarm going off. Yes, it goes off instantly, but the door you enter the most is going to have a delay on it if it is set in a way mode, meaning no one's there. So when you come in, that's where it starts beeping and gives you the 30 seconds, no more than 30 seconds chance to get to the alarm panel and turn it off these are things that you should be discussing with your security company when they do put in the alarm is how long is that delay you know some people have a minute some have two minutes well i've got my groceries i've got you know the kitty cat runs in and out and then <laughs> the alarm goes off and then they call and they ask me for that stupid code that no one can remember ever and then they have to call the police okay get real and do your business you know go in 30 seconds at the most for the delay in away mode just because it starts beeping doesn't mean your alarm's going off it's not that's the delay so when brink talks about the instant arm which is in stay mode you're there so no one's coming in you know, you don't have the teenage, you're not setting the alarm and then the teenager is going to get home at midnight after your two hours of sleep. You don't want to do that. That would still be, you know, you have to work those parameters out with your own family. But when it is marked in a way, it's instant alarm on all locations, meaning any breach, the siren is going off, not the beeping at the keypad. 
And like you said, a lot of people don't know that. That feature's always there. You want that because that's you know going to notify you that something has breached your perimeter yep. in your house at night. It's going to startle them as well as you. So, well, it puts them on notice that you're on notice. Correct. Mm-hmm. Everybody's on a more level playing ground now, rather than the creep sneaking around in your house and you're dead asleep. And when you are awoken, then now you're not on a level playing field. This okay. levels that. Have both of y'all, I'm sure, I think most uh, people in America have had their smoke alarm go off in the middle of the night. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it wakes you up pretty quick. I mean, you know, yeah, you're a little groggy, but it's not like, oh, what's that? I mean, it's, yeah. it's pretty much instant, oh, crap, get my crap together. Um, so, again, back to your triple Ds, you know, delay or deny. Um, that's what we're trying to do. But in, in this stage, now we move to destroy. And to, Correct. you need to be able to obviously handle that. But so if, if you're in your home, your bedroom, like you said, Jim, and you hear something, let's say it's breached. Well, that depends on a lot of things. I don't know how old your kids are, but do they know what to do if that goes off? If not, you need to have a conversation with them about that. Right. Um, I like creating safe closets for clients. Um, a lot of bedroom closet doors, you can, and of course, if you're building a house, you can do this from the beginning, but make have the closet door swing out, right, towards you. Don't be an in-swing door, swing out towards you, and add a deadbolt to it. Okay, so what can you not do to a door that swings towards you? You can't kick it in, mm-hmm. right? I mean, it's you just can't. So, you know, if you got that, got that in your kids' rooms, they know they're instantly going there, get under their bed, whatever it is, right? But, but talk to your kids about what that looks like. I have a client, and I had to have this conversation with her who said, well, if something happens in the middle of the night, I'm going to go get my kids. And I'm like, no, we're going to teach your kids what to do, and you're going to go hunting. I mean, no, because you're just exposing yourself and bringing whatever's in your home towards your kids, right? So um, ha- having the ability to turn lights on, you know, unless you train in low light and all that kind of stuff, um, it levels the playing field a little bit if you kick your lights on while you're clearing your house. Otherwise, how are you seeing? And again, if you train with a weapon light, like my house, I'm not turning the lights on. I'm, I'm hunting you in the dark, yes. but I train that way. I mean, that's, you know, uh, there's there's some difference differences there, but... What are you going after them with? A baseball bat or a firearm, right? And of course, firearms. You know that that I guess we can get into that. I mean, there's there's a couple of things that are universal um, communication devices, if you will. One is a laser. Uh, I'm not a fan of actually using the laser in firearms. I just for a lot of reasons, but they can be certainly intimidating, but the other sound that's pretty much universal is the sound of a pump action shotgun being racked. And it's also a very devastating weapon, a 12 gauge, even a 20 gauge um, shotgun in any range within a home is going to be really, really devastating. I mean, prior to us running rifles, that's what we ran for work, right? So as a point guy, before we had rifles, I ran an 870 shotgun as my most offensive weapon. Takes a little bit of training, not a ton, a little bit. Um, you need to be familiar with the weapon system and how to manipulate it under stress and um, practice getting your safety off and on and all that kind of stuff. Um, but that's a that's a good choice for some people. I mean, I, you're a big fan of a shotgun for home defense, right? Absolutely. That's, uh, you know, there again, we're, we're in the middle of the night. You're not thinking, um, you know, it's not what I do every day, you know, for my career, unlike you. And the former career, yeah. former career, and the the training that you have, you know, my target went from a softball to a, a beach ball, you know, that I have to hit depending while I'm on the staggered. range. Yeah, depending on the range. But if I'm that close, I also have something to push them off with a little bit more. Uh, I, I do, you know, people laugh. I have a laser on my shotgun, <laughs> like really. I was like, that's just the warning. That keeps me from having to say, you know. With when some, when I see and, and this actually happened at my house in my backyard and somebody got into my wife's car and I grabbed her pistol that has the crimson trace laser on the handle and I wasn't thinking in the middle of the night when I did that and I snuck out the back door well, number one I didn't have to give my location away by saying freeze or 
get away or i'm gonna kill or <laughs> shine a flashlight at them that says hey i'm standing right here if you have a gun shoot at me you right. know i put the laser on them and they, they can't tell where it's coming from absolutely well i mean if they saw it in the beginning yeah. they could i mean this individual didn't even know it when i placed it on his chest <laughs> and so i had to wave it around for him to see it then he realized what it was and took off um you know and there's some you know i don't there may be some legal issues there somebody could say that you know by me putting the laser on that that created a a threat to him so if he had a way i don't know um don't care. It will let, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going to be, I'd rather be tried by 12 and carried by six. So Amen. that's uh, kind of the way I look at that. Um, uh, by the way, a dead man can't testify or sue you either. It, uh, that's saying. not legal advice. Just, Brink. That's just, I'm just making a statement. Advice. That's not legal advice. <laughs> exactly. Um, but anyway, so I put the laser on my shotgun for my home defense weapon, which also has a flashlight on it as well. So that, I know when I grab it, I have my laser. That's my warning. That's letting you know, hey, I have a weapon on you. Um, at that point, if you want to do something, then, you know, we, we go from there. But I also have the, the light on it. Um, it. It's a, you know, just a regular tactical light that can go into the flash mode or, you know, push button only or turn it on. And Strobe leave it on. mode. Strobe mode, yeah, yeah. which, you know, people don't like. Oh, no, it's very disorienting. Yeah. I, I ran a strobe always on, so, if I was running a light. You know, so, I'm, th I'm thinking we need to break this one up into two parts, this uh, this episode. Okay. So, All right. So why don't we kind of end it here and then tease the next episode? That's, oh, yeah, I can't believe we're already at 31 minutes. Yeah. Wow. But I didn't tell you the secret weapon. Go ahead. Oh, I, don't, no. I don't think you want to know. <laughs> we'll do Stay the, tuned for the next episode to find <laughs> exactly. out. It's like rated R, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, all right, well, this wraps up part one of a two-part episode here on tips, tactics, and tools for a safer tomorrow. Next episode, we're going to cover uh, some specific points about training. Uh, we're going to talk about handguns, uh, semi-automatic and revolver, as well as rifles for home defense and kind of what the best fit may be for you. So please tune in to part two. In the meantime, thanks to, again for listening to this edition of Tips, Tactics, and Tools for a Safer Tomorrow. You can always find us on Facebook, Twitter, or reach out to us at tipstactictools.com. I'm up.